Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Over the past six months, I have captured four images that I haven't shared with you using four different telescopes. This one, this one, this one, and finally this one. So join me in this video while I share those images with you. So like I said, over the past six months, I've captured quite a few images which I haven't created a video for and I haven't shared on my social media channels. Now, that might be because I was just too tired to capture a video at the time, or I didn't actually think that the data was gonna be that good, so I didn't think it was worth capturing a video for. So that data has just been sat on my hard drive for quite some time, but I finally got around to editing it and I'm actually really pleased with how those images have turned out. So let's go back inside in the warm, jump into the computer and I'll share those images with you now. So the first image you're about to see was taken with the Edge HD, um, the 294mm Pro, and it was taken of a part of the Heart Nebula. So this image here is an image that I've taken before of the Heart Nebula. This was taken with the Ascar FRA 400 at 400 millimeters, um, and this was using the 2600 mono. And as you can see, there are some awesome parts of the Heart Nebula. So if you zoom right into the middle, you'll see Malot 15, such a great uh, target within the, uh, the Heart Nebula for the edge, one that I want to go back and shoot. Um, there's also lots of detail around the outside of the Heart Nebula, but the target that I went for was the fish head nebula which is this target you can see here right at the bottom of the image now this framed at 1400 millimeters when i was using the reducer with the edge hd um, fit in the frame really nicely so i thought it was quite cool to see the difference between shooting the heart nebula at 400 millimeters um, compared to shooting the heart nebula at 1400 millimeters with the edge so this was the data i managed to get this is the ha data this was 50 five minute sub, so four hours, 10 minutes. This was the O3, um, so 48 five minute subs for the O3, um, so just over four hours worth of data. And then this is the S2, um, and this was 53 five minute subs. Now I was fairly happy with the data, but I know my telescope wasn't collimated as accurately as it could. Um, so I have since bought a tri Basinov mask, which um, I was recommended by a good friend of mine, Ollie, um, and that is has allowed me to collimate the telescope so much more accurately. So I would highly recommend one of those. Looking at my data that I took before having that tri Basinov mask, when you zoom in on the stars, you you can see they're okay, but they're not perfect. Um, so yeah, I'd highly recommend a tri Basinov mask. Um, but anyway, after working on the image, after editing it, this was the image that I came up with. So this is my fish head nebula um, with the Edge HD. And I was quite happy with the detail, detail I was able to pull out of this image. I just love this dark structure running through the, the center of the image and all of this detail up here. I was quite pleased with the amount of O3 that I was able to bring out because that signal was fairly weak. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with this image apart from those stars. I just wish they were slightly more round, but that was as good as I could get them. And looking at these two images, it is amazing to see um, the difference between the, the Heart Nebula when you're shooting at 400 millimeters compared to when you're shooting it at 1400 millimeters with the edge. Um, so yeah, this is the first image that I wanted to show you. Okay, so the next image is the Pac-Man Nebula, which I took with the ATPHQ. Now I was hoping to include this in my review for the, uh, for the telescope, um, but I didn't get around to finishing it in time. And in fact, I don't actually have a huge amount of data on it. But this is the hydrogen, um, so this was 38 five minute subs, and I'm quite pleased with the amount of detail that I've picked up here. You obviously get quite a lot of detail when you're shooting hydrogen alpha anyway. Um, but yeah, lots of, lots of nebulosity, um, lots of detail in the core. This is the O3, 
Um, and again, I think I need more data if I want a really good image of the Pac-Man. This is just 29 five minute subs. And then finally, we have the S2. And this was 37 five minute subs. Um, and I'm surprised by how much detail I was actually able to, to pull out of this, this uh, S2 data. Um, but overall, when I combined it, I was quite quite pleased with the, the detail that I was able to pull out, especially when you zoom in on the dark structures in the middle of the image. So I think um, those sort of floating dark structures right in the center of the Pac-Man, I think those look quite cool. So I was able to, to pull those out of the image quite nicely. Um, around the edge of the Pac-Man, again, I think it's looking quite nice. The stars, obviously shooting with the AT2HD, the stars are always going to be quite nice. I was really impressed with the stars from that telescope. Um, but there's a little bit more noise than I would hope for. Even though I ran um, noise reduction, there is still quite a bit of noise in this image. So obviously more data would help with that. Um, but yeah, overall, fairly happy with this image. So the next image that I want to show you is of the Wizard Nebula captured with the Ascar 400 and the 2600 Mono. Um, so I have shot this target before, but I shot it at a thousand millimeters when I owned the 190 Max Stop Newtonian. Um, so I zoomed right in at the Wizard Nebula and able to pick up quite a lot of detail. And I think that that's how most people shoot this target. Um, but I wanted to go slightly wider and I wanted to try and pick up some of the, the nebulosity that's surrounding this target. So, so this is the HA, so this is 34 five minute subs. Um, so not a huge amount of data and I would like more data on this target, um, but still able to pick out quite a bit of detail in the Wizard Nebula itself. I'm just starting to bring out some of that detail in the nebulosity to the right in that the, the other target within the frame. Um, so yeah, fairly happy with, with that. Um, this is the O3. This was 37 five minute subs. So not a lot of detail on the right, but quite a bit in the core of the Wizard Nebula. Um, so yeah, fairly happy. Um, and then this is the S2. So this is actually 56 five minute subs. So considerably more than the other two filters, um, but you can see that there's just not a huge amount of S2 in this target, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, this is the image that I was able to edit. It's actually my least favorite of the images that I'm gonna show you today. Um, but yeah, it's not too bad. I still quite like the framing. Um, like I said, it's slightly different to most of the tight shots you see of the Wizard Nebula. I'm quite happy with the detail that I was able to actually pull out of the Wizard Nebula itself. So if you zoom in on the Wizard, um, you can see quite a bit of detail there. I like the O3 coming out of the, 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 the Wizard and uh, throughout the frame as well. Um, but yeah, just there's something about it that I'm just not overly happy with. I can't really put my finger on it. I actually prefer this image in Starless version. So I really like Starless images. I know some people hate them, um, but I'm quite a big fan. So with the, uh, with the Starless version, I think you can just see a lot more of that dust going around the actual nebula. And I just think it makes it pop a little bit more. But, but let me know which you prefer. Do you prefer the Starless version? Or would you prefer the image with stars? Okay, so this is the final image that I'm going to show you today and my favourite image from the four. Um, so this is taken with the Red Cat 51. I think it's the first image that I'm actually sharing on this channel with that telescope and the 2600 Mono. So this was of the Seda region with the Crescent Nebula in the frame as well. So because you're shooting so wide at 250 mil, you can fit quite a lot in that target. And this area is just absolutely full of amazing targets. So this is the HA. This is 40 10 minute subs stacked together. And I just absolutely love the detail in this image. Anywhere you zoom in on this frame, you see something really amazing, really quite cool. So such a great part of the sky to shoot. So this is the O3. This was actually only 18 10 minute subs. So there's quite an imbalance between O3, HA and S2 in this, this image. Um, but again, quite, quite pleased with the detail, um, quite a lot of gas and quite a lot of O3 in this image. Um, as you can see, a very nasty halo there from the Antlia field filters from such a bright star. So I guess that is to be expected. And then this is the S2. So this is 37 10 minute subs. Um, 
as you can see the crescent almost disappears with the with the s2 um, but you do pick up gas all the way around the soda region um, all the way around the butterfly nebula um, but yeah really really happy with how this image turned out so this is the final image um, like I said, anywhere you look on this image, you're picking out something different. You zoom in, I love the dark nebula going through the structure. I love the crescent nebula um, in the image as well. Um, but yeah, just absolutely thrilled with how this image has turned out. Um, I prefer it in this orientation, so I prefer it in a vertical um, orientation. I think that with the, the butterfly nebula almost acting as sort of like that S-shaped curve with the crescent in the top right, I think works really well. Um, but for the purpose of YouTube, I'll come back to the vertical. Um, but yeah, zoom in on, if I zoom in on a few areas here, you can just see some of the, the detail that this 2600 can pick out. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with this. I think the first image of the, uh, with the red cat that I've shared with you. Again, one of these images that I think works really well as a starless image. Um, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, this is the, the fourth and the final image that I had to show you. Okay, so those were the four images that I wanted to share with you taken with the four different telescopes. Please do let me know which is your favourite in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Do you think that the Seda region with the Crescent Nebula was the best image? Or do you prefer one of the others? Please uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I do really appreciate it. Thank you very much um, if you've already subscribed to this channel. If you haven't, please consider doing so. And if you have enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button. Thank you guys very much and I will see you in the next video.